All right. Good morning. And thank you all for joining us for this virtual town hall. Uh, we're so excited to have you here this morning to engage with us on this important conversation about the future of the Grand Rapids Public Schools. Uh, my name is Leon Hendricks. I'm the new executive director of communications and external affairs, and I'm excited to be back a part of this district. And I say that because it is a return home of sorts for me. I started as a Grand Rapids Public School scholar uh, back in preschool at what was then known as Congress Montessori. And I've got some photo proof positive of that. Uh, I had a chance uh, along with Superintendent Roby and uh, some of our other team members to visit Congress and a number of other schools on the first day of school. And I remember just being struck by what I saw. Our students, our scholars were showing up, uh, so excited to be there. You saw the, um, the fervor in their faces for being back a part of the school environment. We saw parents that weren't just dropping their kids off, but they were coming inside. They wanted to see the classrooms. They wanted to see and meet the teachers. And it hit me at that time just how serious and important this work really is. These parents and our scholars, they trust us with such an important part of their lives. When I looked at those kids, I saw the guy you see on your screen. And it had me thinking about how much and how important my school education was in making me into the man that I am today. It made me realize that failure is not an option here and that our scholars not only deserve a quality education, but they deserve the best possible education that we can give them. And that's what this meeting and that's what the discussion around the facilities master plan is all about. It's about ensuring that our resources are streamlined so that every dollar is going toward the betterment and the success of our scholars. And we are looking for your engagement in helping us really chart the course of the future of our school district. So normally at an event like this, we'd like to say, sit back and relax. But today we're asking you to lean forward and engage. You'll be able to submit questions throughout this event using the Q&A function. You should see that on the bottom of your screen. Just click Q&A and you can type your questions there. And we'll have time dedicated at the end of this meeting to going through some of those questions. We also wanna hear your comments and suggestions. This is about collecting feedback from our community because we know when we put our minds together that we will make sure that our scholars win. We've seen it happen in our community time and time again. So now I wanna turn things over to the hands of our leader, um, someone who has dedicated her career to the betterment of young people. And we are so excited um, to have her leading this work. Our, our superintendent, Dr. Ladrian Roby. Good morning, everyone, and thank you so much for being here. Thank you for giving up a little bit of time with us. We value your time and we want to make sure that we are doing the work to engage our community. Um, as Leanne said, my name is Ladrian Roby. I am your proud superintendent. This is my third year in the district. And Similar to Leon, I also have a picture of myself as a, a young girl. Um, and this is one of my favorite pictures. I was seven years old and my mother had me in tap, ballet and jazz. And I just knew that at one point I was going to be a performer. I wanted to be on stage and dance. Um, and, and until I got into my second grade classroom with Mrs. Levitz, Mrs. Levitz was my second grade teacher. And I just, she introduced the love of, of reading. And I remember sitting in the classroom every day after recess, she would read to the class for 15 or 20 minutes. And I could not wait to just sit at her knee and, and just kind of engage in that. And when I think about, you know, how, she got me to think, what do I want to be when I grow up? Because initially I wanted to kind of be a performer and, and dance and do other things. But I was like, oh, I really want to be a teacher. And, and so I recognize the power and the influence that educators have on every young mind. And Mrs. Levitz is someone who um, certainly influenced me. When you think about a healthy, vibrant school 
and think about yourself as that seven-year-old or preschooler or even as a, a 10th grader. Um, and you might have children at the ages that I just have suggested, but when you think about a healthy, vibrant school where your child is thriving, what are some things that come to your mind's eye, um, either in your own history or the history of your children or grandchildren or some special child in your neighborhood or family? What are some things that come into your mind's eye? And I'm gonna invite you just to maybe share a word or two in the chat of what that image is, a vibrant school where children are thriving, they're running into the building every day and just can't wait to be there. What are some things that you might see, hear, or feel? And I'll invite you just to throw it in the chat. This is gonna be interactive, even though, of course, we are um, presenting information, but we wanna hear, I see playful, I see laughter. Don't be shy. What are some other things that you might hear, see, or feel? Collaboration. I see security, fun, and inclusion. Okay. Teaching. I see all those amazing. things. All of those things. Um, when a school building is vibrant and healthy, there's an energy and a buzz to it. If you walk past the classroom, you hear kids, you might hear laughter, you might hear um, young people debating a topic or somebody to say, oh, I got it. And as a former classroom teacher, that is probably the, the golden words when it just like clicks and you get to experience a, a young person saying, it, it makes sense to me, or I got it, or man, I did it. And so those are the things and the environment that we want our young people to have and the things that we are trying to create as we are talking about our facilities master plan, because we're visioning what our future is and also what our, our current reality is. And we wanna make sure that we're sharing this with you and engaging our community in it. Um, our facilities master plan, as you know, is an offshoot of our district strategic plan. And that's a process that we went through um, in April of 2021. We began that process of asking our community, what is it that you would like to see? And we started kind of with, um, our, our data of the, the why we were doing this, the cost, the processes, and the possibilities. And so um, this is, as we are going through our presentation this morning, we're going to do that again, where we're going to give you the why. We want to lay the foundation of why we are where we are, and then also some information around data and costs. But then I want you to to join in and as Leon said, lean in and be thinking about what this process is. And then also finally reimagining the possibilities because this is not doom and gloom, but I think we have to be very honest with our community and want to share with our community in a very transparent way as to what the, the um, experiences that have been taking place and how do we prepare for the future so that we continue to be stronger and um, a more vibrant school community because that's what we desire. So what you have um, in front of you is our vision of excellence. And just very briefly, I'll, I'll read it to you. Normally I um, just allow people to read it along silently and then I just point out a few things, but I wanna just talk about this um, pretty quickly just to give you an overview. This is the, the umbrella of why we are doing the things that we are doing in our facilities master plan, in our curriculum, um, in all the things related to our strategic plan. This came from our board. They, they brought this forward as leaders of our community to say, this is our declarative statement of what we expect Grand Rapids Public Schools to be. Grand Rapids Public Schools will implement equitable and culturally sustaining practices and strategies to ensure that all GRPS scholars, inclusive of race, color, age, religion, national origin, ethnicity, language, immigration status, ability, sex, gender identity, gender expression, sexual orientation, socioeconomic background, and mobility are educated, productive, and self-directed members of society. 
we will remove barriers contributing to the disproportionate outcomes by incorporating anti-racist and exclusion, inclusionary practices. The diverse identities of our scholars will be valued, celebrated, and represented throughout the district to ensure a sense of belonging. And what I so appreciate as a school leader, as a person who's been charged with um, helping to, to usher in this work is that our board, and I know I have a couple of board members on um, screen. I, I saw Ms. Um, Shockey, and I don't, and if I have missed anybody else, is there anybody else, um, Mr. Hendricks, that I may have missed? I want to publicly acknowledge their courage for saying all means all. And no matter how our young people, what their experiences are, who they are in their authentic self, we want to make sure that we are celebrating those young people in order to ensure a sense of belonging. And one of the things that we talk about constantly in our district is how do we create that sense of belonging? And it's letting people know we want you here. We value who you are and what you are. And our goal is to help you achieve your dreams. Mr. Hendricks, did I forget any um, board members? Uh, no, Trustee Shockey is the one I see. There are some uh, folks that are unidentified on here. So okay. uh, I just wanted to acknowledge. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And so kind of related, if again, just taking a quick dip backwards so that we can go forward. This is our strategic plan. And if you recall, we were engaged over the two years. Um, community surveys, focus groups, um, small group sessions, community input sessions, lots of different conversations that we took time to kind of peel back the layers of what we loved about GRPS, what were some opportunities for GRPS. And if you look in the columns, you can see the different community sessions and then also the various stakeholder groups, because it wasn't just about our current staff, or our current students, we wanted to make sure that we were engaging our community. Um, you'll see affordable housing advocates, business leaders, higher education, um, the equity team, municipal leaders, faith leaders, foundations, because this is our district. And one of the things that um, our board has set the, the foundation for is to make sure that we, we unpack this and say, a strong school district has a strong community. And transversely, a strong, community can have a strong school district. And so we want to be lockstep in making sure that people understand this is our school district and we are doing this work together. So after kind of all of that, we also made sure that we analyzed our data and our board came up with a set of priorities and then themes related to that vision of excellence. The six priorities, and these are student outcome driven because that's the base of our work, right? That's who we are in the center of everything we do. We are in the education business of lifting up young people so that they are prepared for the future. And so the six student outcomes that we are striving for, increasing literacy and math proficiency for all of our scholars, reducing academic disparities for our black and Latino students, um, reducing Black students' exclusionary discipline practices, increase student power, belonging, and agency. And again, that goes back to that equity statement of we want all to be here and to make sure that we are embracing and celebrating all. And then the final one is increase successful transitions from high school to college and career. And again, everything that we do, it's about preparing our young people so that they're ready for the future. Our themes related to our strategic plan, meeting scholars holistic needs, optimizing all school options, ensuring equitable access and outcomes, making sure that our curriculum and program opportunities are competitive and are preparing our young people for the future, engaging a more impactful, diverse workforce, and we're doing some of that now. And then the final one is create a culture of trust, collaboration, and stewardship. And I want to just um, kind of put a, a pin on that one right now. This is what our facilities master plan is all about. And that's why we're doing this conversation, having these conversations with our community right now. It's to say, we wanna be in partnership. I think that means that we are transparent and we're saying, this is what, what our current conditions are. Here's what our hopes for the future are and how are we gonna do this together? 
All right. I am going to stop talking for just a few moments, and we have uh, Mr. Paul Willis, who is one of our consultants from Plant Moran Cressa. And what I appreciate about Plant Moran Cressa, they do work all over the state of Michigan, but then also across the United States, where they look at data and communities and um, work with school buildings and municipalities and give information around what trends are taking place and then what the predictions are for the future. And so Mr. Um, Wills has been phenomenal for our team. He's worked very closely with um, the GRPS team, but then he's also worked across the state with other school districts um, to help them prepare for an either, even healthier and brighter future. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Wills. Thank you, Dr. Roby, and good morning, everybody. Uh, yes, going back to our school days, uh, this is a picture of me, uh, probably in second grade, uh, which would have been in the late 70s um, going forward. So again, you can imagine what education has looked like uh, over the last 30 to 40 years. Um, so really, the, well, the slides we want to go through, is, as Dr. Rowe mentioned, is really data-driven. So when I go back to the 1998-99 school year, Grand Rapids Public Schools had just under 27,000 total students in those facilities. Um, obviously, when you take a look at that number, you're thinking, well, wow, it's a pretty, pretty large number where we are competitively or comparatively. What's interesting is the state of Michigan had about 2.2 million students at that time. Uh, currently, the state of Michigan has 1.6 million students. So if, on the next slide, one of the things you're going to see is kind of where is the district at today? So you take a look at the roughly 13 to 14,000 students that walk the halls of GRPS every day. And what that in, uh, really takes a look at is when we overlay your number of facilities, and we'll hear from Mr. Alex Smart here shortly, but what that means is your capacity to your enrollment does create that excess space. And as Dr. Roby said, is not necessarily a hindrance, but what are those opportunities we could do with some of those spaces? How do you reduce operational costs, uh, which Mr. Smart will get in here shortly. Uh, but at the end of the day, this is kind of what we think the enrollment is gonna be for the district. And one of the things you'll see on the next slide is where's the district been really in the last 10 to 12 years? So in 2008, right before the uh, great recession and the housing crisis, if you will, the district had a roughly 19,300 students on uh, 2022, down to 13,466. We should also note that in Kent County from that same time period, there's roughly almost nine to 10,000 live births back in 2008, 2009. That number is just over 8,000. So you have a thousand less students, or I'm sorry, children being born every year, which is really compounding that fact going forward. Um, GRPS tends to be, uh, continue to be a very uh, great district that kids wanna be in. The housing uh, is very strong in Grand Rapids, but which is actually creating a couple of different challenges, if you will. So we do set birth rate slowing down, but it's still decreasing. Back in 1994, they had the schools of choice options along with the charter schools. So that's obviously impacted GRPS. The COVID-19 pandemic actually did exacerbate. You take a look at those live births we mentioned, it actually decreased the number of live births that we're seeing. So how does that infect uh, GRPS, let's say for the next five or 10 years? And as I mentioned, affordable housing. Um, that's one of the things that the city actually brought up at a joint presentation with the board back in May of what are some of their objectives and goals uh, relating to housing, affordable housing and communities going forward. So again, that trend we do expect to continue. Um, the, uh, the fact is taxable value is very strong, which actually gives GRPS an opportunity to look at some capital options in the future. Um, and the next slide. One of the things you'll see is we're going to turn over to Mr. Smart, who's going to talk really about the impact of, of costs and, and to uh, that enrollment. So, Mr. Smart. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Dr. Roby. Um, uh, like uh, Paul mentioned, uh, my name is Alex Smart. I'm the Executive Director of uh, Facilities and Operations with the Grand Rapids Public Schools. Um, uh, of, of course, I, I did not have a uh, school age photo, uh, so I guess my baby picture there is gonna is gonna have to do. But uh, I am very proud of my daughters, uh, and I, you see me right there at their college graduation. So um, education has, uh, has been a very strong uh, part of my family. Um, when we get to uh, the cost, we need to begin to uh, look at what GRPS actually has to maintain. Uh, we currently own 50, uh, 59 buildings, of which two of them, uh, 42 of them are educational facilities. Uh, we also are responsible to maintaining uh, 720 acres of land, uh, which makes us the second largest uh, land uh, owner uh, in the city of Grand Rapids. 
uh, all, all these are opportunities that uh, that uh, uh, GRPS has uh, as we uh, look into this facilities master plan. But the uh, um, the cost uh, of uh, maintaining our buildings is something that is very real. Uh, like uh, Paul mentioned, um, the the uh, the uh, um, uh, enrollment decline that we have been facing. Uh, also translates into surplus type of a space, uh, spaces that we have. Uh, we currently um, have uh, roughly 4 million square feet uh, of buildings that we're maintaining. Uh, and when we translate the declining enrollment and we look that into the facilities, uh, that, that translates into approximately 1 million square feet of space that we do not need. Um, now, uh, industry-wide, um, within the K-12 uh, community, the maintenance cost of these uh, spaces, these buildings uh, goes between three and $5 a square foot. And uh, if we were to take uh, the average, uh, this is translating uh, very easily, uh, math to $4 million uh, a year uh, that we have in, um, in expenses to maintain this additional million square feet that in reality at this point, uh, the district uh, does not need to serve our students. Um, in addition to the $4 million uh, a year that we're spending, uh, we also have um, what we refer to as deferred maintenance. Uh, the deferred maintenance, uh, for those that uh, may not uh, know exactly what, what it is, is it, it, you've heard the expression of kicking the can down the road, and that's exactly what the deferred maintenance is. Our, our projects that are important for us to do, however, we may not have the funds uh, to complete them. Uh, so we are uh, putting band-aids on some of the things or delaying uh, doing the work. And when we look at district-wide uh, in all our buildings, uh, we are calculating roughly $430 million of deferred maintenance cost. Um, if we reduce the square footage by roughly a million square feet, we may be saving approximately $145 million in deferred maintenance uh, cost. Uh, next slide, please. Um, so th this brings the, the conversation to what, what do we do about it? What are the opportunities for us to, uh, to uh, be good stewards? Uh, and, and, uh, and in short, um, it is the uh, conversation about consolidating some buildings, consolidating programs. Um, and in long term, we're talking about reinvesting and revitalizing our schools, uh, school system or school district. Um, just, just imagine what uh, the resources that we would clear. Um, would uh, would translate to our students and, and to our, uh, our staff um, by reducing a million square feet. It, it does it does clear the uh, um, the opportunity on the facilities perspective to be able to better serve our students. Uh, right now, uh, we um, are experiencing, like many other industries, a shortage in 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 labor. Uh, we cannot find people. We have shortages in custodians. And, uh, and that is becoming a little bit difficult for us to be able to properly serve our students because we can't find people. Uh, but if we have less spaces that we need to be cleaning, for example, um, we can reallocate the resources that we currently have to be able to better serve our students. So with that, I, um, I will pass it on to uh, uh, Dr. Roby. Thank you. All right. So... Again, I so appreciate both Paul and Alex for kind of giving the, the data and the costs. And again, this all sets the foundation of the why. It is not all gloom and doom, but I think from a place of transparency, we this is why we're doing the town halls. We want to make sure that people understand what's taking place, but then also we're trying to co-develop a plan because strong school community means strong broader community and so we want to co-develop what this plan will look like so that we can be in a better place and continue to grow and thrive over the next few years what we're going to talk about now is the process and so um again our board is super super in tune to making sure that we have clear processes and that we are continuing that feedback loop with our community to say what we know and what we don't know and what we're, we're gonna be discovering. So what I can tell you, we know. We know we're gonna to have to close schools. Doesn't mean that we're closing programs. 
we're going to have to consolidate some of our schools just based on the information that was shared. We will not be closing high schools. Part of our district's transformation plan, if you recall, in 2012, it was about repurposing high schools, making smaller high school programs. And so we will not be adjusting our high schools, but we will, during this process, be evaluating how do we continue to make our high schools stronger. And, and then our work right now will be primarily on our elementary and middle school programming how to consolidate those programs so to make sure that we have a strong articulation as students go from pre-k all the way through that post-secondary experience know that transparency in our decision making is is met, it, it's important right and so this is why we're coming to our community to say here's where we're at here's what we're imagining for the future here's where we need some feedback on um, understand that this will um, cause some concern, angst, worry. And as I've been doing this and our team has been doing this, I've had um, quite a few conversations with community members, board members, staff members, and some of it is, well, last time this is what took place. And, you know, or this is where we don't feel um, things, you know, will, will go as smooth. We understand that. And again, I'm gonna go back up to the transparency place. I know that change is hard. I honor that whenever we start talking about making change, people's anxiety goes up. And so that's why we're coming to our community to say, here's where we're, where we're at, here's what we're imagining for the future, and let's co-create this together. And then the final thing, um, what we know, we've got to give people time to prepare. So this is not a one and done kind of conversation. As you can look on our website, um, you've seen that we've been all over our city, we've done some online as we're doing this morning. Um, and then we'll continue to go back out to our community uh, in the future to say, here's what we've heard from our survey data, from our town halls, from our questions that we're getting. And so we wanna give people that time to, pre to prepare. Part of transparency also is acknowledging the things that we may not be as familiar with or we're not sure exactly. And so here's what we're learning don't know which buildings so um there's not a a secret list it's like we we're going to have a process around how we'll evaluate how we move forward and i'll talk about that in a, in a later slide um the precise timeline this is not happening this year but we wanted to get ahead of it to say here's what we're thinking and we have an idea of when we're going to start making some some moves towards this facilities master plan and, and so, but we don't know it's gonna be on this date at this time. What we're still working through is our scholar priorities. Going back to our equity statement, our vision of excellence, and then our outcomes related to our strategic plan, it's important that we keep our young people in the center of all of this because this is the work that will impact their academic future. And so we wanna make sure that as we're making decisions as a community, how will this positively impact our young people? Individual program needs, again, we're not removing programs, but we are consolidating. And so even a one program that might be in one school, we'll, we're gonna be thoughtful about how do we combine programs so that students don't lose out. And then the final thing is measuring success. Because whenever people hear change is coming, they think, well, what's gonna, you know, how will you know if you're successful? One of the ways that we'll, we can measure success is by increased enrollment, um, greater satisfaction of our families and our staff and our community, um, having the bells and whistles that our young people so deserve as they are going through our education system. So those are some soft measures of success. All right, again, is, is this my screen that's blinking? Or other people's screens blinking? It, Dr. Relby, mine is too, and I was okay. worried my battery was dying, but it, I think it's just a technical glitch. Hopefully Thank it clears you. up. Yep. Okay, because I started to get nervous. I was like, oh my, it's, <laughs> is my screen about to go out? So We can see and hear you loud and clear. Perfect, Thank you. Thank you for that. So again, this is our opportunity to begin engagement and continue engagement. 
we've had, um, we have 11 town halls planned and we're about halfway through those town halls. We are doing them online as well as in person. And so we invite you to engage in this process with us. We are doing scholar surveys that will be launched in the next um, week or so. So our young people will have an opportunity to weigh in and say, what do they desire for their school communities? What things do they want? And so I think it's really important to engage in student voice. And as you recall, one of the tenets of our strategic master plan is our strategic plan, excuse me, is to give students a vo voice and agency. And so we want to include them in this discussion. Um, we also have our public survey, which is available at grps.org. Um, this month, because it's October 1st, we are beginning some lunch and learns with um, smaller community partners, business community, elected officials, some of our social service agencies, because again, I'm gonna continue to drill into strong school means strong community. Strong community means strong school. Also our board, they are engaged in this process with us. They are having dialogue um, during board meetings and in smaller work ad hoc groups to make sure that we're all in alignment. And the final way to connect with us, if we don't answer your questions today or you think of something a little bit later, you can go to myschools at grps.org. And that's another way to say, hey, what's going on? Um, what we are doing with the, the myschools at grps.org, as we get questions that are frequent questions, we're adding that to our FAQ because we wanna make sure that people see, can see what concerns or questions people have and that we can answer it in a very thoughtful way. All right, um, did you advance one too many? I might have, sorry, something's weird about what's going on here. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm gonna stop the share and restart, give me a second. Okay. While he's doing that, all of this information, and the next slide is just basically talking about um, again, all the different ways that we're connecting with you and our process, our board by December of this year will be deciding how will they be moving all the information that we've collected over the summer in, into the fall to make a decision around how to move our facilities master plan forward. And so the goal is to begin to vote on what that plan will look like. And then we will again come back in 2023 to begin sharing what that information looks like and to start digging into a little bit more detail around schools and programs and timelines. All right. While Mr. Hendricks is um, working through this, I can just tell you, um, and I, I can share share kind of again, the, the process we expect will be over a period of several years. And so we wanna do this right. And I think it's important that we, um, to do it right, you have to go slow and be thoughtful and make sure that we continually engage with our, our community. Um, we don't expect any changes to any current schools to take place before the 24 or 25 school year. Um, and so again, that's going back to that commitment of we want to give people time and so that we also need time. As you know, our district is a very large, diverse district and we want to be considerate of the different moves and changes that have to take place for this to be effective and, and positive for young people. Um, and finally, there will be opportunities to engage with our school board um, and myself beyond 2023. So we will continue these conversations 2023 and beyond. Now, the last thing that I kind of want to um, point out, or the two last things I want to point out, the values decision-making process. And again, similar to what we shared at the beginning of our presentation with our vision of excellence. Our board also wants the community to understand we are making this decision together and the rubric that we're using is tied right back to our facilities master plan and our strategic plan. 
This will be aligned with our strategic plan, looking at what outcomes are going to be best for young people. How do we ensure that we're being equitable? How do we ensure that we're being transparent? All those things that are a part of our strategic plan. Um, we want to make sure as we're moving this forward that we are investing in educational spaces and scholar opportunity. And so it's not closing to prosperity. We're trying to make sure that we are being very thoughtful about how do we continue to grow. Um, being equitable. So we want to look at our current city model, looking at those birth rates, looking at where young people are, and to figure out what makes the most sense across our city. Prioritize, and we didn't talk about this one in a great deal, but I do want to drill into this a little bit. Prioritizing um, property for community benefit. And what our board has been considering is how do we, with that, those extra facilities, because this is an asset, our facilities are an asset. How do we help make that link for that strong school and strong community? And so how do we take the, that asset to make a stronger community? Is it housing? Is it green spaces? Is it community centers? Those are all the things that are being considered. Plant Moran, um, as Mr. Wills kind of um, shared, I know that they've done this work in lots of different communities and they have different ideas of how school buildings have been repurposed to be the value add to the community. And then the last thing is, of course, to be financially, um, fi a positive financial impact for our district and so we always want to be in a place where we're healthy financially and so considering the the amount of space that we have how do we make sure that we leverage that for the future our last slide oh, you just put it in a q a i thought there was one more slide mr hendrix commitment Sure, we can run through that and um, and then we'll do Q&A. Okay. Yeah. That's just to make sure that we are keeping our scholars um, in the center of what we're doing and making sure that we are continually um, transparent and to grow stronger. That's, that's it. Mm -hmm. So with that, we are at our question and answer. I know that we gave lots of different um, lots of information, but again, we are we want to engage with our community. What are some wonderings that you may have? And we have several members of our team um, that are available to help answer questions. If you have some things with some um, that I am not able to answer, we'll we'll turn it over to those team members. All right, thank you, Dr. Rowley. So yeah, the way you submit questions to us is go to the Q and A uh, section uh, here on Zoom. And you are able to type questions right in there, and we will share them here. At this point, I'm not seeing uh, any questions, but uh, I'll kind of start things off, Dr. Roby, with one of the questions that seems to surface a lot in our town halls. Um, it's folks who interpret what we're saying as, uh, you know, is does this mean the district is in financial trouble or needing to do budget cuts and that sort of thing? Can you uh, can you talk a little bit about that? Sure, um, and we are not in financial trouble most districts have you know we all have budgets that we must report and and so we are actually financially very healthy as a district right now i don't know that we've always been that in the last few years but our finance team and some of the things that we've done around um cutting pro not cutting programs but reducing staff or as staff have left not replacing positions has helped with that and um, we are actually in a very good financial spot, but we want to make sure that we remain in a good financial spot um, for for the future. And again, you know, we invite anyone who's here to um, to put questions in the chat. Um, and, and here's one from Jessica. She's asking, "How do you prioritize schools to determine if they will stay open? Are you looking at enrollment, staff shortages, etc.?" Dr. Roby. Thank you, Jessica, for that question. I think it's important that we look at all of those things. And, and so as we are looking at individual schools, we want to be considerate of what is the capacity of that particular building? What is their current staffing? Um, what is the age of their building? And then also to 
make sure that the building is in a, in a spot where it can continue to grow and develop for the future. Those are all those things that we want to want to consider. And then if we're consolidating a program, one building with another, does it make sense um, to combine those two programs and how would they, they mesh well? So it's a lot of different things, but we're not just going to look at one variable versus another. It's kind of that complete picture. And uh, another question we often get is about our uh, staff and our teachers. You know, people, a lot of folks have concerns about uh, their well-being and security when we have conversations like this. Um, can you talk about, uh, you know, kind of what we've been able to to say to assure our staff that uh, that yes. to them going forward? And so that's a, a good question. And so we have actually met with um, staff members. We're going to continue to do those conversations. And so we've met with our um, bargaining groups as well as our building leaders. Um, we are meeting with teachers next week. And of course, any of those um, members are invited to any public meetings, but we're doing also more individualized, personalized meetings because we want to make sure that we're able to answer some specific questions that they may have. Um, with respect to, you know, staffing, we've been talking about, again, that's why we're not saying we're making this decision and we're moving forward. We want to be considerate of when you bring students together, you also have to think about bringing staff together and giving them opportunities to um, work together and get to know one another and build that sense of community. And so being really thoughtful about that. The last thing kind of related to this, and you didn't specifically ask it, we are not laying off. So I need to make sure that people hear that. Um, with our current staffing model and the number of students that we have in buildings and the staff that we have, we are able to sustain ourselves without laying people off. We know that there's always going to be a certain percentage of people who will retire each year or decide to, to move on to other places. And so we're able to sustain ourselves without having to cut positions. That is not what this process is about. All right. And, you know, obviously there's a lot of uh, hard work and some difficult conversations that go into this. But Dr. Roby, I want to ask you and give you an opportunity to share what excites you the most about going through this process? Um, it's a lot of different things. It's so as everybody knows, I joined um, the district in the middle of a pandemic and um, and I didn't really have my first year here. I met people via Zoom and, and even though I'm meeting people via Zoom today, but what has been exciting for me is that I've been able to kind of engage with the community more publicly and get to know people and to hear their stories. Um, what also excites me is that we are building for the future. And when I think about public education and all the different things that are out there and how do we remain competitive and provide opportunities for our young people to kind of just reimagine what schools can be and what education can be, that also excites me, but we're creating it together. And so, I like that we don't necessarily know. I mean, everybody wants to know kind of like, what is the vision? But there's just so many possibilities around that. And we're doing this work together. And I think that that excites me because I think that young people will benefit from how we are making some tough decisions today. It will have long term benefits for our future. All right. Thank you, Dr. Robbie. We do have a question here from Sherry. She's asking that when we close a school, will the staff have a choice as to where they will go or where they will be placed? And so um, it kind of depends. And I know that because that gets into kind of like the bargaining um, um, bargaining pieces. Administration always reserves a right of placement, but we also want to be um, considerate of what you know, people's preference preference is, but sometimes that may not always work out. So if we have um, a position that's really specific to a, a program, that may limit where um, that teacher or that staff member may be able to go. And I'll use like, um, sometimes with our special education programs, they are in, in buildings. And so that make sure that, you know, we have the right staffing for licensure, that they have to go to those defined buildings. All right. And, uh, you know, another thing that I've heard us say before, I think it's worth mentioning here is, you know, when we're talking about what we're doing with our buildings. That is one thing, but our schools are more than our buildings. Our schools are our teachers. Our schools are the, um, 
hundreds of dedicated professionals that are serious about the future of education in this community. So the that to me is the heart of this school district and that's not going anywhere. You wanna weigh in on that, Dr. Roby? I do, I, I mean, I agree. I think your school community is the heart and the hub of, of what you do and we produce the future. I mean, we have a pulse on what our, our future community is going to be. And so again, we want our young people to have the very, very best experiences so that they're ready to kind of launch and, and, and to do that. And then we wanna make sure that our community, and I, I appreciate this about um, Grand Rapids, and I've only been here three years, but the, the wraparound love that you see, you don't always see that in um, other communities. People have just like strong, it is in their blood. I went to GRPS for this, and I, you know, I had my school experience here, or my mother taught, over here or my mother was a you know in in the district here and so it it runs deep and so we want to continue to build on that and and to flourish all right we'll give folks a few more seconds here if you want to put in a question that we'll answer live uh, but don't feel like this is your last opportunity uh, at grps.org right now you can see uh, there are other town halls that we have scheduled so we welcome you to join us in person um, there are, uh, there's also that email address, myschools at grps.org. So if you think of something that is uh, on your mind that you don't, uh, haven't asked you or don't want to ask in this forum, we invite you to email us at uh, myschools at grps.org. Um, our team is looking at those emails, uh, we're taking that feedback, and we're moving forward. But seeing no more questions, uh, we'll bring this event to a close. Uh, Dr. Roby, I'll leave it to you to uh, to make a final remark as we say goodbye and have a great Saturday to everyone. All right, again, I appreciate, our team appreciates you being here and just being invested in kind of this conversation. And as Leon suggested, this is not the last time we want to engage. And also I will extend this offer as well. If, there, if we need to do other conferences and other calls, we're certainly wanting to do that. We want to make sure that our community understands the why and, and also what the possibility is. And we'll do that again and again. So please check out our other town hall opportunities. And if um, there's need for other opportunities in the future between now and the end of the year, we are certainly willing to do that. And as promised, this is not the last conversation of this type. We will be continuing this in 2023 with um, more specificity around what that vision looks like. So with that, again, thank you all for being here. Have a, it's, the sun is out on, on Saturday, 